Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. Hello. I'm letting everybody in. I know we're going to have a lot of questions today. Just trying to get everybody logged in. Good morning or good afternoon. Happy 4th of July, folks. <laughs> Almost, right? All right, I'm going to close that. I'm going to turn this off because we don't need that. How's everybody doing today? Thank you, Patty. Fine, Patty. How are you doing? I'm hanging in there, let me tell you. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not, I have my favorite shirt on. It says make criminals afraid again. Cause we all have that problem, right? <laughs> oh, all okay. But hot in Santa Monica, we've got June gloom. It's not hot at all in Santa Monica, but we got June gloom. Good to know, Melanie. It is hot in San Bernardino. I'm sitting in the car. It is 115 degrees, okay? No joke. Wow. Look at that. 115 degrees. Do you see that? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Patty's going to be a patty melt if we stay on for the whole hour. <laughs> I am sitting in the car. Okay, so a couple things we want to talk to everybody about. Still letting people in. Bear with me. New security deposit law is in effect currently, right now. Everybody got that? New security deposit law is in effect right now. Okay? I talked to an attorney this past week about the new security deposit law and here's the concerns that they have and they're the same ones I have when you're doing a lease renewal you want to make sure you're either doing an addendum adding additional time to the lease by extending the lease term okay you don't want to sign a new lease packet all over again otherwise your deposit may be too much. Make sense? So if you have a higher security deposit, don't do a whole new lease packet at, for a renewal because it looks like you're entering into a new agreement and that can cause you some trouble as far as one month's rent as a maximum security deposit. I hope that makes sense. Keep hydrated. Is it okay to text the guarantor when my tenant's late? Christina, you should be serving the guarantor a three-day notice the same time you serve the tenant a three-day notice. Oh, every, good to know. Every document you give to that tenant needs to be given to the guarantor as well. Patty, how do you serve the guarantor? Do you serve it at the property? Because usually the guarantor doesn't live there. Usually the guarantor doesn't live there. You're absolutely correct. I always make sure I mail a copy to them as well. So even if I'm sending a notice for um, like uh, doing something to the property, like adding an AC to the window, I send that to the guarantor as well? Look at it this way. If the guarantor isn't kept in the loop, how do you hold their foot to the fire? Got it. Will do. That way they're included in every aspect of the rental and can't say they had no idea what was going on. It's, I know what they pull in court and I'm just trying to give you the ammunition to combat that, okay? I mean, what about just making the guarantor a tenant? Well, that's fine too. Um, I don't necessarily make them a tenant because they don't have possessionary rights. Guarantors are not tenants. Co-signers can live on the premises. A guarantor cannot. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. And let's face it, we want as not as many people in the house because it's more wear and tear, right? 
right. so guarantors are responsible but they don't live in the property co-signers can live in the property okay also i have a question um you know, I'm always looking for creative solutions to get around some of these um, restrictive issues. What about for a new lease? If we say, let's just say the rent is $1,000 a month, and let's just, of course it's not, but, and let's just say that um, when the deposit's they- 2000 No, no, no. So how, since we can only collect one month security deposit, how about just making- um, how about saying the base rent instead of a thousand is um fifteen hundred dollars a month and giving them a concession um of five hundred dollars a month and then charging them the security deposit based on the base rent? That's a hell of a lot of paperwork you have to deal with every month just to hold an additional five hundred dollars. What I don't understand what you mean. Because every month you're going to have to credit their ledger for their credit of 500 bucks so that you can take a higher security deposit. Well, if I just put it in the lease that it's an automatic rebate, concession, if, whatever if you, you want to call it. Court, if you get into court for any reason, they're going to want to see a ledger. Oh, good to know. And in some of these municipalities with rent control, you have to give all these documents to any any written communication between landlord and tenant must be given to the rent control board. That's um in several cities, including Santa Ana. Patty, for the ledger, does it have? Can you just do it on Excel? Are there certain requirements on the ledger? Um... Well, I'm going to talk to you because I know your history and your background. Write a column or ledger by hand. Make sure there's no late fees on it and it only reflects rent. You said do it by hand and no late fees, only rent. You got it. And no utility. Okay. Don't put anything on there but rent if you're in L.A. because you don't want to be challenged. Oh, no, I'm in San Bernardino. But OK, thank you. I, I, I got you. You want to. Okay. And and let's just say this across the board for everywhere, okay, you guys? Technically, we shouldn't be charging late fees right now, okay? Can we? Yes, still yes, it's still questionable. It's on the fence, okay? They haven't made a ruling saying we can't. But I will tell you what happens to you when you get into court if you're charging late fees. Opposing counsel is going to say you're price gouging and making a secret profit. You're going to immediately go, wait a minute, I'm not making a secret profit. I told them how much their late fee was going to be. It's $300, which is 10% of their rent, and their rent's $3,000. So why am I doing something wrong? Your bank's only charging you $35 if you pay your mortgage late. So now you're price gouging. You're making secret profit. It's not a secret profit, Your Honor. I put it there as a deterrent. It's a deterrent until you collect it. And then, is it secret profit? Late fees are being heavily litigated, and mostly in L.A. County. We're probably going to lose them. But if they're on your ledger when you get to court, it gives opposing counsel something to argue. Remove the argument. Love you. Handwritten, column or ledger rent only skip fees only okay patty why handwritten can it be excel or you can use excel i just oh, okay. use a handwritten ledger because it's quick and easy and you can do it in the parking lot of the courthouse come on <laughs> oh got it okay you get what i'm saying in other words don't feel like you have to have this proper ledger done in excel or something along those lines it's not a requirement if you're handwriting it on a steno notebook in the parking lot, so be it. That's your ledger. Got it? Just trying to be helpful. Okay, now I got to go backwards to all the chit-chatting because I miss so much with you guys. Okay, we we're talking about guarantors. Can you do a LARSO change of tenancy after the lease goes to month to month? Yes, but doesn't LARSO require you to be in a one-year contract, or is that just the city of Santa Monica? 
And I'm waiting for Arlene to pipe in and go, blah, 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 because she knows. <laughs> and Larso, Arlene, do we got to be in a one-year contract? The initial. The initial, initial one. Initial is one year, and then it can year. go month to month after that? Yeah. But what I wanted to know was, I typically just do the change of tenancy. I don't do a rent extension form. Perfect. Perfect. You can also okay. do an addendum, addendum and then write a lease extension on an addendum. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. If I see tenants from the ring camera that they are using the water hose to cool their kids off, how do I handle? Who pays the water bill? I do. Okay, I know that. If you don't allow them to do it outside in the yard, they're just going to go in the house and do it in the bathtub. Okay, so one of the tenants that moved out, I ended up looking on social media and I found out that last year he filled up a whole swimming pool and had a whole pool party on the 4th of July. So I'm trying to well, avoid that this year. If he does it again this year, you can serve him notice of excessive use and give him the water bill. Okay. But you got to catch them why they're doing it. Got it. Okay. So go bust and, him on 4th of July. But if I see that they're putting up a pool, let's say tonight or tomorrow, can I call them and let them know, hey, cut that shit out You're for You're in violation of your written rental contract. It's an attractive nuisance with the landlord's insurance company and is not allowed on the premises at all. It creates a liability issue for them and for the landlord. What if somebody drowns in there? Yep. Okay. Okay. It's a liability issue and it's an attractive nuisance. Write that down. So's a trampoline. Attractive nuisance. Got it? Patty, what about um, playhouses? Because some of them are kind of are two stories where you have the slide. No. The okay. key word there was what? Uh, uh, oh. You only gave me oh, two, two words. What was the key word? Two story. No. Or no. You Playhouse? called it a what house? Playhouse. Play. What does play have to do with? I have... Children. I have no Are children uh -huh. a protected oh, okay. class in the state of California? <laughs> yes. Okay. Got it. Watch yourself you. with play. Anything that says play, children, kids, stop yourself right there. How is this a fair housing violation? Because it's coming. <laughs> if you're using play, Children, watch yourself, okay? Those two words should always strike a red flag on the back of your neck. As in don't say it or they're not allowed to put those up, like, you know, like a little As play. As in don't or... say it because if okay. you use the word children are not allowed to play in the common area, that's discrimination right there. Got it. Okay, anything to do with children and playing is protected, so be careful. Adi, quick, quick, quick question, please. A, uh, how do you handle a, a tenant that uh, on purpose leaves the water running inside his or her unit just for revenge? Because whatever Excessive reason. use, and now they're stuck with the bill because it, under your utility billing in your lease, it says normal usage, correct? Yeah, how do you figure out who's doing it, though? Um, you can pinpoint a leak or a running toilet. And if you can't pinpoint any of that, then you can start doing, you got to figure out who it is, dates, times, and witnesses, and use that to your advantage. Okay, next question. Rent increases in San Bernardino County for August. The percent will now be 9.3, not 9.6 anymore. Wait a minute. Are you going ahead and figuring out what the CPI is for August of 2024? Because you're dead freaking right. They're lowering our maximum rent increase probably across the board. But San Bernardino County is going down 0.3%. You are correct. Single family residence, city of San Bernardino. My tenants left a satellite dish. Can I have my painter remove patch paint? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Can you go over... If tenants don't leave a mailing address, yep, it's real easy. 
um, put a blank env- or a, an envelope and make it out to them at the address they just moved out of. Put your address as the return address, like you're mailing them a letter. And then right at the bottom, forwarding address correction requested. If they put in a forwarding address with the post office, it'll come back to you with a yellow sticker on it. That yellow sticker will have their new address on it. If they didn't, it'll just come back to you as undeliverable. I think I'm going to run out of gas. (laughs) Sorry. Squirrel, blonde squirrel just came right up in front of me. Um, For unpaid water and trash bills, do I just pay and add to the dispo and settle in small claims? Absolutely. Larso and Skep payments charge a hefty late fee. LARSO and SCEP payments charge a hefty late fee. I don't know about that. The bank charges $35. Yeah, right. Yeah, if you actually look at your mortgage, a lot of your late payment fees are only $35. Some of them are 45 bucks and we're charging an arm and a leg. That's not okay. (laughs) Tenant received a note from the bank that it's been 90 days and rent checks not cashed. Does the tenant have an obligation to repay? It has happened several times in the past couple years. The tenant received a note from the bank that it's been 90 days and rent checks not cashed. Is the owner complaining they didn't get their money? If the owner didn't get their money, serve notice. If the owner got their money and the bank didn't take it out of the tenant's account, that's not your problem. No, the tenant, the money came out of the tenant's account. They, they, They did bill pay. The bank sent the check. And the owner, who I guess is becoming maybe senile, lost or didn't do anything with the check. And so the, the money was put back in the tenant's account. Is the owner then, saying that the tenant they, is the owner saying that the tenant owes that rent to the owner? No. Then Right. Okay. I just Yeah, I just a friend asked happened to my friend and I just didn't know. Okay. All right. So I just told them to put the money aside in case they want the money. Okay. Got it. Thank you. I know nothing. (laughs) Larso, multifamily. One tenant's second floor window was smashed from outside and needs replacing. The tenant thinks it's kids playing in the courtyard. If we find something on camera for the culprit, what then? Well, if the culprit's a neighboring resident that you also manage, you can charge them for the expense. If you don't know, and they can determine that it was broken from the outside in and not the inside out, then it would fall on the owner to fix it. If it's a random act of violence, the owner fixes it. If it's determined that that window was broken from the inside of the unit to the outside of the property, then your tenant's an LLPOF and they're responsible for the bill. Can anyone refer a trusted property manager in Simi Valley? Um, Ed Hawk, Hawk Management, he's real good. He knows his stuff. He's the broker at Hawk Management. Um, Text me and I can give you his cell phone number. No problem. I actually, I think you texted me about that and I got up a big text message and ready to send it to you. And I don't think I hit send. So text me back or remind me and I'll send that over to you. But Ed Hawk at Hawk Management. He's pretty, he's pretty spot on and he keeps current with um, the rules in the Valley. A lot of those Valley properties fall under LA City's garbage and he's pretty slick with that. Okay, does anybody have anything else? Because I'm a widget pop. It's 115 degrees still. <laughs> hey, Patty. Run out of gas. Uh, when is your, um, uh, the meeting for the, uh, what was it, service animals or ESA animals? When is that going I, to be? I'm going to reach out to Agla. They have not rescheduled it yet. As soon as they do, I'll let you guys know. Okay, is, is the topic of ESA animals going to be brought up? That's what the whole class is. Oh, okay. Okay. No, it's not just on service animals. Same thing, sweetheart. 
<laughs> okay. Look at it this way. Service animal. Wheelchair. Therapy, therapy animal. Also a wheelchair. Also a wheelchair. Therapy animal. Service animal. Emotional support animal. All wheelchairs? Yes. Um, Guide dog. Wheelchair? Yes. What's not a wheelchair? What's not a wheelchair? A pet. A regular pet. Bingo. Bingo, bingo, bingo. She got it. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll reschedule. I haven't heard from them, so I'll reach out to them and see. Um, Roadrunner, we know that AC is not required in California. Oh, big, bold statement. You're wrong. <laughs> That's not true. AC is a requirement in municipalities that require it. One of them is Palm Springs. One of them is Joshua Tree. One of them is Barstow. Paying attention yet? Some of the municipalities make air conditioning a requirement with code enforcement. So you need to call code enforcement in that city and find out if that city requires air conditioning. If it does and you have an air conditioner, you need to fix it immediately, okay? Is there any way to get the owner to fix the AC if they're not wanting to? Yes, deduct the tenant's rent. If you're going to reduce services, you have to reduce the rent. So no air conditioner versus an air conditioner. What's the rent on that? 50 bucks a month, 75 bucks a month, reduce the rent. Otherwise, they're going to sue you for bait and switch. Got it? Sorry, back to LAHDRSO fee for a four unit is $271.76 and LF is $543.52. So $815 total, that's robbery. I understand, Melanie. And do you know what I say to that? 1031 tax exchange and get out of the devil's cauldron. Because it is. And they're going to keep doing this by raising the trash bill and raising the this bill and making it so you can no longer afford to do business within their city's bureaucracy and BS. Why? Because they want to control the rental market. That's why. Does anyone do midterm rentals in this space? Any advice? Are you talking about like Airbnb and stuff like that? More so are um, renting out to traveling nurses and like a a nomad like like um, space there, people that are um, being contracted out from SpaceX that do like yeah. 30 to 60 day um, rentals. And what's your concern? Um, I'd like to know what is our special types of leases that need to be drafted up for these types of people and are there any um, rent control, not rent control, but are there any like legislation things that I need to worry about or am I kind of exempt from those things given that I'm in this new space? Um, some cities don't allow temporary housing, so be very careful with that. The city of Coachella is one of them. They do not allow Airbnbs within their city or temporary rentals. So watch yourself with what cities you're going into and make sure that it's allowed. And if you're doing it for 60 days, 30 days, you can use a month to month contract. There's no problem with that. Usually for rent control issues, they kick in after the 12th month, but some of them are different. You need to check with the municipality in that city. And if it's if, in LA, you, do, you need a license now. Okay, if you're in the city of Los Angeles, you need a license to have an Airbnb. So there you yeah. go. So this is where it all starts coming out, so okay? The, the people that are doing Airbnb in the short-term stage, they're the ones who are getting hit with all of these um, new rules because they're avoiding the short-term stage. So the people are transitioning to midterm. Is it so new that there isn't any laws that are prohibiting this type of like business model and then it, it will come down the pipe eventually? Exactly. Thank you for paying attention. I'm 90% sure that somebody that listens to my talks is talking to the government about how to combat the way that we come around them. So as soon as we think of something to turn it the other direction, they change the law and make it so we can't do that anymore. 
I mean, I don't know a nice way to say it. <laughs> yeah, I'll just run it till till I can't run it anymore. <laughs> yeah, right? Until it doesn't make sense financially. Um, Roadrunner, oh. you're asking me about the AC again. If AC is not a requirement within that unit, then look at it this way. You rented it to him with the swimming pool, and now the swimming pool has gone. you got to credit him every month going forward with a rent reduction, or you did a bait and switch because you did a reduction in services. If you're not providing that service, you must give them that credit. Otherwise, it will burn you later. Patty, can you say, can you say the air conditioning or appliances and say, um, but your the tenant is responsible for repairs, that it's just a convenience? You can, as long as it's not a built-in appliance, example, or something that you're required to do, like an oven. Right? If the oven doesn't work, does the tenant owe rent? No. No. I want to make sure I own the oven so that they can't say their own oven doesn't work and then use it against me. Make sense? Yes. So if it's a built-in microwave, owner has to fix it. If it's a built-in dishwasher, owner has to fix it. If it's an AC unit built into the property, owner has to fix it. Make what sense? about a window unit? What about a window unit? If it's there when you rented it to them, you have to maintain it. And what about a, a washer dryer in the unit? If it's there when you rented it to them, you have to maintain it. What I put in my leases is this. Pay attention. <laughs> Everybody got their pen out? Are we ready? The washer and dryer currently installed in the unit is there for the tenant's use only, and the landlord will not maintain. That does not work for a built-in microwave or a built-in dishwasher. Got it? It only works for a refrigerator, a washer dryer, something along those lines. Okay? Thank you. No problem. Could you please explain about service animals versus wheelchairs? I missed that Zoom meeting. Belsey. What I'm telling everybody is a service animal, a therapy animal, an emotional support animal is the same difference if somebody uses a wheelchair, it falls under the same laws, okay? So I use it as a reference so that we can remember that's not a dog, it's a wheelchair. Can I charge them an extra deposit because of a wheelchair? No. Can I charge them extra rent because they use a wheelchair? No, okay? So what we're doing is we're defining it in a way that we know what the rules are. And a wheelchair is a very good way to put that exclamation in. We can't ask somebody that uses a wheelchair to pay a higher security deposit, right? We can't ask for a higher security deposit for an emotional support animal either. It falls under the same laws as a wheelchair, okay? That's why we're calling them wheelchairs. It's just an easy way to remember what you can and can't do. Can you have special rules for a wheelchair? No. Same concept. Can you have special rules for an emotional support animal? No. And yes, you're right. Some places are not built for wheelchairs, but we can't tell the tenant that they can't use a wheelchair. Patty, what if you clearly see that this, I mean, they're trying to say it's a service animal and it's clearly not because service animals have to be well behaved and isn't there a way to go around that and report because I, I think it is um, illegal to say a service animal is a service animal when it's clearly not they have to have tasks and although you can't ask them to perform those tasks you can ask what they're tasked in yes if they say that it's a service animal, you can ask what service does the animal provide and not another question after that. But for an ESA, you can't ask what services they provide because they only provide comfort. They're not trained to provide a service. Bingo, we're all talking and everybody I agree with so far, okay? <laughs> Um, I got another question. What if I have an ESA that is, um, you know, an aggressive breed or a Great Dane or something um, that I have an umbrella policy on all my insurance, my 
properties for insurance. And Wait, I, I already know, I already know where you're going. Like, okay. Have them fill out a request for reasonable accommodations. Right. Based on their doctor's note for having the ESA animal. If your insurance company says they're going to cancel you because of that aggressive breed dog on the list, show them the request for reasonable accommodations based on a disability and ask them if they can discriminate against the disability because you can't. Okay. Pat so if, Patty, if they discriminate, it's okay, but I can't. You can't discriminate, neither can they, but that's how you're going to put it in their head. Okay. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Patty, I spoke to my insurance broker about this um, a couple of days ago, and he said, um, legally, they do not have to renew you. So yes, they'll finish out the policy, but they are not required to accept. They will just do non-renewal and they'll put, they don't even necessarily have to provide a reason. They can feed you some other reasons that they have too many um, insured properties in that area, but they do not have to um, renew you. So Correct. what and then? then? You're just gonna find a new insurance company at that point that allows for the animal. But then that goes. That makes my premium a lot more expensive. Yeah, and again, let me say this to you guys out loud: It's a matter of time before we're going to be forced to allow all pets in properties. They've already made it a law on January first of 2025 for all new construction must allow pets in all residential dwellings within the state. They are gearing us up to allow us to allow pets everywhere. They've also taken away pet stores from selling pets in California. I don't know if you guys know this, but you can now only rescue or adopt. You cannot buy a cat at a pet store. You cannot buy a kitten. You cannot buy a puppy. You can't do any of that anymore. You can rescue from a rescue or from an animal shelter period, end of report. From breeders too. You can purchase a dog from a breeder? Yeah. In California. Starting so. January 1st, no more private sales of pets. So you can only yeah. purchase from a breeder outside of California? <laughs> Look, try to find a puppy in your area that you can buy. Just Google it. You know, they give you all this list of stuff. You're going to find that all it keeps sending you to is shelters and all this other stuff. Rescues. Pet stores can no longer sell pets. Well, not cats and dogs anyway. I know because this girl right here was trying to get a kitten for the longest freaking time, okay? And I wanted to rip my hair out. Couldn't find one anywhere. It's not easy. They're shutting that part of it down. So, Patty, on this same topic, if we, if the insurance does not allow you to renew and you have to go get homeowner's insurance elsewhere, but you can't because a lot of um, insurance companies left California and because I'm going through this right now and I... There's, I know there's a huge insurance call Homewell. My buddies at Homewell will insure you. Okay, got it. I just didn't know if you could then say it's not a reasonable accommodation anymore because I can't get insured. <laughs> let me let me tell you why I keep saying this, okay? Attorney, mm -hmm. opposing counsel attorney is going to find you an insurance company that's going to take you. They're going to charge you five grand a month, but they'll find an insurance company that'll take you and then present it to the court as it is allowed. And you'll argue, but it's $5,000 a month. Uh, unless it's costing the owner over $10,000, the court doesn't want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> Got it. I mean, I, I wish I had a nicer way to say it, but don't bang your head in the wall on that because you're just going to end up banging your head on the wall. Okay. You said home well, right? Home well. And if you guys text me or email me, I will send <clears throat> you the information for home well insurance services. <clears throat> Is that for multi multi units? Everything, okay. industrial, commercial, residential, home well insurance is an insurance broker, and so far they've been able to provide several of our members, followers, etc., insurance coverage at decent rates. 
Patty, I have a question regarding air conditioning as well. Okay. And I'm going to run out of gas. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> in the city of Whittier, uh -huh. if tenants are requesting an air conditioning, uh, because some units have and some units don't, you don't have to do it. I'm sorry, you saw this unit when you rented it and it didn't have air conditioning. We're not gonna do that at this time. If you'd like to give us a 30 day notice in writing, we understand. And what if we just put an air conditioning in, a, in another unit, um, the, a, a unit like a few doors down, they have a brand new baby, they asked for it. The owner said, yes, go ahead, put it in. So I did. Now you're discriminating. Right, so now I have to, right? Now you have to. Yeah, okay. And I wouldn't have done it for the brand new baby. Just saying. Unless they ask for a request for reasonable accommodations because the mama is protected for six months after giving birth to that baby. Patty, question. Yes. I heard um, the other lady earlier make mention of um, the term of a lease and meaning that you know most leases are 12 months i started doing month to month are you telling me that month to month tenancy is not uh acceptable in in los angeles city or state of california city of, city of la wants a one year at hello and then a month to month is okay Starting, when did that start arlene will pipe in i'll hear her <laughs> been years and, and in West Hollywood too. RSO has always been one year minimum to start. Anything that's governed by RSO. So even in the Valley and Torrance and Compton, because we're finding RSO is spreading like cancer. Okay. Requires one year at hello and then you can go month to month. The city of Ma Santa Monica and there's another one. I want to say it's Simi Valley, but don't quote me to that because I got to go look it up. They require a one-year lease contract and then for you to renew with like or similar terms. And if the tenant doesn't want to sign to a new one-year, you can actually use that as a cause to evict. Okay. Patty, one more question. Okay, this one's a buck. <laughs> also in the city of Whittier, I passed out disclosures um, for a, a new client that I had that he didn't have all of the proper, the five disclosures, the bed bug, the prop 65, the blah, 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 um, mold. You know, I so I passed them on in his building because he didn't have them in his file. Everybody gave them back except for one lady. It's been a month um, and she hasn't returned it. Do I, is there some sort of like... um. You served it to her. Fill out a proof of service and put it in the file. Got it. So there was no need to give her like a, a performance or anything like that. Okay. You served it to her. Fill out a proof of service and put it in the file. Got it. Thank you. Okay. It's the easy button. <laughs> so um, yeah. I have a question. I have a question for you off the record. Have you ran the address for that Whittier property through Stayhouse Delay yet? Because East Whittier, West Whittier, South Whittier, and North Whittier are unincorporated and require you to be registered with DCBA. Only Whittier City proper is exempt. Yes. And that brings me to the next question, actually. Um, what is, you know, um, also this LA City Business Tax Registration Certificate, the BTRC. Yes. That's so now for certain properties, <clears throat> we're paying the registration every year. And then we also have to pay this business license. Yep. That is crazy. So I- um, It's only gonna get worse. They're even talking about now charging owners for doing those inspections to make sure your property's up to par. Yeah. What? Yeah, they um actually on a property that we have in Los Angeles, they've had to come out three times because it's a big building and sometimes they're the tenant... talking about they're talking about charging the owners a buck and a quarter every time they got to go inspect. 
well, they're charging me now for this third inspection, $300, because we keep serving all the tenants, but every time they go, one tenant's not there, the other tenant's not there. I think, I think this should be a cause for eviction. Yeah, I agree. So now we have this also this LA City business tax registration for some properties are asking me for gross receipts for the last eight years on properties that I that didn't have this. They're not registered with the business tax registration. See what I mean about they're trying to get their hook in you to see what you manage, see what you're doing business, see what's going on. We want your books and records. And we have to do it. We can't just like, no, because if we ever want to- You wanna... know the penalty for tax evasion? <laughs> just say it. Tax evasion, but I mean, how is that? Well, I don't know. You're I running mean... a business in the city by collecting rents. Mm -hmm. That's how. And so what is the registration? Oh, you can't see my hand, huh? Can you see that? I can see it now. <laughs> so registration is one thing and tax is something else. So just more money. Right. And they charge you according to the gross receipts of the year. But how much money you made. Right. Again, 1031 tax exchange. Miriam, I hear you on there. I recognize your voice. Did yeah. you talk to our member, Erin? I sure did. And she, good, good, she was good. wonderful. That's all I wanted to yeah. have happen. I just yeah. wanted that conversation to happen. That's all. Yes. Let me ask you a question about another situation, though. It's a sure. fourplex. It's in LA. It's LARSO. And I, I happen to have my cameras up. And I saw one of my tenants moving another person in. So I called them out on it. And I said, hey. Miguel, I see that you've moved someone in. Uh, yes. And I said, and who is that person? My brother. I said, you do realize that you're breaching your lease. Do you understand what that means? Uh, 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 yeah. I said, okay, well, let me help you to understand. That means that you don't have the right to move someone else in that I have not approved. I have no app. The person could be a murderer, a rapist, or whatever. I know nothing about this person. And you don't have the right to do it. So you are subject to an eviction. Do you understand that? He just got quiet and said nothing. Well, I, he said, I don't seem to know what the problem is. I, I don't see there any problem in it. So the under, question is, under Larso's guidelines for an unauthorized occupant, you can do a 10% rent increase. 10% uh, won't do it for me. That 10%, the amount of water that's being used in that building uh, my water bill goes up probably about an additional $100 for every other month. So that 10% won't work for me anyway. That 10% on. I got you. On, so your other option is to evict for unauthorized occupants. Okay. That's what I'm going to do then. Yes. Thank you. All right, you guys. My arms are sticking to my body. <laughs> it's 115 <laughs> degrees. I'm done. We just okay. had enough. Thank I love you. everybody. Show us your t shirt, Patty. What does it say? Show us your t-shirt before you go. Make criminals afraid again. <laughs> That's a good one. I love it. Make criminals afraid again. I, I don't care it. who makes them afraid again, but damn it, they got no fear and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it too. Hi, <laughs> right, Patty. Take care. Happy Thank you. Bye, well. Take Have care. Bye, Patty. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.